Good day, Junior Tickies. I'm Mrs. Primagone. We're going to look now at Chapter 3, Creditors. Before we start with this activity, it's important for you to go through the theory booklet and understand the theory behind this. Just a quick summary of what is happening with creditors. Creditors means that the business are buying on credit. So we are buying items and we receiving those items immediately, but we're only going to pay it back later. So when we, as a business, owes money to, it means that those people are called our creditors, which is a current liability. And that is important to understand. So if you go back to the accounting cycle, you would remember that the first step is a transaction. The second step is a source document, the third step, posting to the journals, that specific subsidiary journal. From the journals, we post it to the individual's account. And then at the end of the month, we post the totals to the general ledger. And from there, we compile the trial balance and so forth. So if I look now at this type of transaction, this is credit purchases. So it's a new transaction. And there must be evidence, proof, a source document for this type of transaction. So the source document applicable for this type of transaction credit purchases is called original invoice. And why original? As a business, when we are buying on credit, it means we are the customer. And the customer always gets the original. So that's why, don't get confused now, when the business is selling on goods, they would issue a, an invoice to their customer and the business will keep the duplicate. So when we are selling on goods, it's duplicate invoice. But when we are buying, it means that we as the business are the customer, so we will receive the original invoice. And now it's important to remember that we will receive invoices from different suppliers at different times, which means that it will not be in numeric order. And that's why you would see many times in activities, they would tell you, renumber the invoice numbers so that the order in your books is in sequence. And that is important to remember. So for this type of transaction, there's a specific journal which is called the Creditor's Journal. The Creditor's Journal, the purpose of that is to show all the items that was bought on credit. The same as what we've done with debtors, from the journal or, from, or when we show a transaction, it must be taken to the individual's account. So the business will also keep track and record of all their suppliers and they will keep that record in the creditor's ledger. That is an individual record of each one of my suppliers which will show the history. It will show all the transactions that happen and what is the outstanding balance and from there we compile the creditor's list. So starting now with this activity. It says the following information was extracted from the counting records of all-in-one stores. Required, complete the creditor's journal, post to the creditor's ledger and the general ledger, compile a creditor's list and show the influence of each transaction on the counting equation. So this activity, we're only going to focus on credit purchases. This is new. Starting with day four. Purchase equipment on credit from Prime Tech 16,740, invoice B23. And now it says the invoice renumbered number 14. And this is what I spoke about earlier. As a business, all in one stores, we would buy from different suppliers at different times. So the source documents will never ever be the same. So that's why 
they specifically said now invoice renumbered. And then we would know that number refers to invoice number B23, the original, which we've received from Prime Tech. So when we show this now in our journal, we start with the document number. It said renumbered, so the only source document that will ever appear in a creditor's journal is original invoice. So that's why I'm only writing it once and then I can just write the numbers. This transaction happened on day four. We purchased from Prime Tech for 16740 so we show it in creditors control because that's what creditors control means money owed to so this is how much we owe to prime tech and now we need to show for what reason for equipment there's no money column open for equipment and that's why it goes under sundry accounts day nine Received invoice 457 from Vice Stores for stationary purchase on credit 950. So I don't care about the invoice 457. We have renumbered it. So now the next number is going to be number 15. This happened on day 9. From who did we purchase? Vice Stores. How much do we owe? 950. For what reason? For stationary. On day 12, received merchandise from Builders Wholesalers, 22,100, together with invoice H231. All in one stores received an 8% trade discount. So now it becomes a little bit more challenging. The word trade discount means paid less on items purchased. So, we've purchased on credit, but we've received 8% discount. So, how much do we owe after the discount? There's two ways in which you can calculate it. You can first take 22,100 and times it by 8%, but then you need to remember you have to subtract the trade discount. If you take 22,100 and you times it by 92%, it gives you the answer that you're looking for and what is the amount that we owe after the discount. So we start with this invoice number that we've renumbered, number 16, happened on day 12. We purchased from Builders Wholesalers the amount that we owe after the discount and now very important. It happens so often. Merchandise is trading stock. Don't go and record it under sundry accounts as merchandise because then you're going to get it completely wrong. Merchandise is trading stock, so this must be shown under trading stock. On day 20, Purchase packing material on credit from Vice Stores for 1,344 and stationery for the owner's personal use 185. Received invoice 501. We start with invoice that we've renumbered, number 17, on day 20. From who did we purchase? Vice Stores. And now I'm going to approach this a little bit different. I'm going to start with what did we purchase, packing material. So we purchased two different items from the same supplier and then stationery for the owner's personal use. Stationery for the owner's use means it's a personal expense and that must be shown as drawings. Now, if I add those two together, how much do we owe our supplier? On day 25, purchase the following from Builders Wholesalers on credit. So we start again with two items from the same supplier, Builders. We start with the source document, number 18. On day 25, from who did we purchase? Builders Wholesalers. How much? So now I'm going to start first with trading stock, goods, 
is shown as trading stock and packing material, in total, we owe 14920 Then day 50. Received invoice 156 from Prime Tech for repairs to equipment 517. We start with the document, number 19. Day 50. Who do we owe? Prime Tech. How much do we owe? 570. For what reason? It says repairs to equipment, so it must be shown as repairs. Once we've posted all the transactions in the specific journal, which is the creditor's journal, we can draw a line and we can total. And we start with creditor's control, trading stock, packing material, and then sundry accounts. So if I now take from this creditor's journal, your creditor's control will always be credited. Why? The business owes money. Our liabilities will increase. The rest will be debited. So if I take trading stock plus packing material plus sundry accounts, it should equal the 55,041. So this journal is very similar to a cash payment journal. The difference, because we are buying on credit, we cannot have bank. Bank is now being replaced by creditors control. And the source document is original invoice. And because, this is just an important point to remember, different invoices are received with different numbers on different days, we renumber our invoices so that this will follow in sequence. The next step is to post now to the creditor's ledger. And just a reminder, what's actually better to do is, and you will see it later on especially, as soon as there is the cash payment journal involved as well, payment to our creditor. After each transaction, we have to post it to their account immediately so that we know what is the outstanding balance at all times. So looking at the creditor's ledger, it's exactly the same as a debtor's ledger. So this is not unfamiliar, the format. What is just important to remember now, we're talking about creditors. Creditors means it's a liability. Therefore, debit is minus and credit is plus. And that is important to remember. So we start with the first creditor, which is prime tech, which means that on day four, we're going to show in our creditors journal that we've posted it to the individual's account. We start with the date, which is the month, and then the code is for the number assigned to each transaction. So number one would be buying on credit. Details, I'm not going to write the name of the supplier, Prime Tech. This is Prime Tech's creditor's ledger account. So when we're talking about details, we're talking about, but what was the invoice that was in my source, uh, my invoice, which was my document in my creditor's journal. So this was invoice number 14 from the creditor's journal and on the credit side, 16,740. Calculate the new balance, 16,714. Then on day 50, we indicate that we've taken it to the creditor's ledger number one. It was invoice number 19 and the amount 517. So in total, the business now owes Prime Tech 16,740 plus 570 equals 17,310. So now the same must be done with vice stores. From the creditor's journal, we're going to look at on which days that we purchase from vice stores. We start with the date. It must always be in sequence. You can't start with the 20th and then with the 9th. 
We start with the first transaction on day 9. Invoice number 15, we owe 915. And then indicate in your journal that you've posted it to the individual's account. The same happens on the 17th, oh, sorry, on the 20th. It was invoice number 17. We owe 1,529, so my new balance, 2,479. I don't care in the creditor's ledger, what is it that we've purchased? That's why we've got the creditor's journal. I only care about but what is the amount that we owe. The same will happen with builders wholesalers. The first transaction happened on the 12th. It was invoice number 16 from the creditor's journal, 20,332. And that is the balance at the end of that day. Then on the 25th, invoice number 18 from the creditor's journal. So now my new balance, say 20,332 plus 14,920. Right, this now confirms that we have taken everything from the journal to the individual's account. So now our next step is to complete the creditors list. And to complete the creditors list, we are going to write each creditor and what is the outstanding balance at the end of the month. And then we just total that. Once we are done with this, we can move now to the creditors, to the general ledger. And now it's important to understand the following. From the creditors journal, creditors control will always be credited. Why? Our liabilities will increase on the credit side. The rest is going to be debited. So I'm going to start with posting the first money column, creditors control, to the creditors control account in the balance sheet section. Because it's a money column, it happens on the last day of the month. And now, very important, my details is sundry accounts. And what's the reason for this? I bought on credit, trading stock, packing material, equipment, stationery, drawings, repairs. And for that reason, we write sundry accounts. And the total was 55,041. Now, we just apply the double entry principle. If creditors control is credited, it means now trading stock is going to be debited. And think about it. My trading stock is an asset. If I buy more, my assets will increase on the debit side. Now, just a very important point. From the creditors journal, what is the contra account? Creditors control. You cannot write bank. Bank wasn't involved. CPJ wasn't involved. From the creditors journal, your details is creditors control. Then we've purchased packing material. So packing material has a money column. At the end of the month, we're going to take the total to the debit side of packing material. Why? Our expense will increase the more we purchase. Did I apply the double entry principle? Yes, for every credit, there's a debit. Now we need to post from sundry accounts. And remember now, posting from sundry accounts means that we are posting on the day the transaction took place. So the first one, we've got equipment. Equipment, for every credit, there's a debit. Equipment is an asset which will increase on the debit side. So if we buy more equipment, our assets will increase. And it was with 16,714. From the creditors journal, my details are creditors control. And this happened on day four. Then we've got stationery. And please take note before we go to stationery. 
Every time I've done posting to the general ledger, I indicate that I've taken it to balance sheet account number B5, balance sheet account number B4, nominal account number N3, balance sheet account number B3. And now stationary. Stationary is an expense, which is in the nominal account section. So when we buy more stationary, our expense will increase on the debit side. With how much? With 950. From the creditors journal, my details is creditors control. We indicate that we've taken this to account number N4. Then we've got drawings and drawings is a balance sheet account section. So my drawings will have a negative effect on my owner's equity. My drawings will always increase on the debit side, which will have a negative effect on the owner's equity. And this happened on day 20. The last one that we need to post is repairs. Repairs is an expense in the nominal account section. My expense will increase with 570 from the creditors journal. My details is creditors control. Now, if I have a look, we've taken all the transactions to the individual's account. We've posted all the totals. We have posted it to the general ledger. There's nothing left over. If you have a look at your general ledger, remember I said in the beginning, from the creditors control account, creditors control is credited, the rest is going to be debited. So if I add all the debits, it should equal the credit side. And if it doesn't, you've made a mistake. And now secondly, the creditors list must be the same as the creditors control account. If it's not the same, it means somewhere you've made a mistake posting to the individual's account or somewhere you've made a mistake. So then you need to go and have a look. Completing the accounting equation. And we're going to follow now that concept of what I've just said. From the creditor's journal, creditor's control is always credited. The rest is debited. So if we look at day four, we bought on credit, creditors control is credited. What did we purchase? Equipment. Equipment is regarded as an asset. So our assets will increase and our liabilities will increase. Remember the plus with the amount. Nothing happened with owner's equity. So the same transactions we've completed in the creditors journal, we're now just completing that on the accounting equation so that you can understand the influence on the accounting equation. Day 9, received an invoice for stationary purchase on credit. Creditors control is credited. Stationary is debited. Stationary is regarded as an expense, which means if my expense increase, it will have a negative effect on the owner's equity. My liabilities will be plus. Remember that your accounting equation means assets equals owner's equity plus liabilities. So this is an equation which should balance. This asset should equal owner's equity plus liabilities. And if I take 950 plus minus 950 plus 950, it means that is zero. It means that assets equals owner's equity and liabilities. On day 12, we received merchandise, which means that we've purchased on credit. Creditors control is credited. Trading stock is debited. Trading stock is regarded as an asset, which means our assets will increase. Nothing happened with li owner's equity. Liabilities will be plus. Day 20, purchase packing material on credit from buy stores and stationery for the owner's personal use. So when you get the transaction where two items was purchased from the same supplier, always show it separately on the accounting equation. So we start with, we purchased on the 20th, 
We purchased packing material, which means creditors control was credited and packing material was debited. Packing material is an expense which will decrease our owner's equity, our liabilities will increase. And then the second transaction, or not the second transaction, the second entry, creditors control is credited and our liabilities will increase. Stationery was purchased, which is for owner's personal use, and this is shown as drawings, which means it will have a negative effect on the owner's equity. On day 25, purchase the following from builders wholesalers. So again, the same approach. We start with what did we purchase? We Creditors control is credited. Trading stock is debited. It's regarded as an asset, which means plus our liabilities increase. And then we've purchased packing materials as well. Creditors control is credited. Packing materials is debited. Packing materials is regarded as an expense, which will have a negative effect on your owner's equity. Creditors control a liability positive effect. Then the last one, received an invoice from Prime Tech for repairs to equipment. From the creditors journal, creditors control is credited. Packing material, sorry, repairs is going to be debited. It's regarded as an expense. If our expense increase, it will have a negative effect on the owner's equity. Creditors control is regarded as a liability our debt is going to increase. So a reminder, this activity, the focus was only on credit purchases. So it's a new transaction that you are learning. And from the next activity onwards, we're going to look at, but what happens if we make a payment to our creditors? So then we're going to look at credit purchases as well as payment to our creditors. Thank you very much. I want to leave you with this quote. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world.